Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Instagram 101 training. Um, let me just pull up the uh, presentation here. Uh, welcome. And thank you to the Office of Alumni and Parent Engagement for allowing us to host today with you all. Um, great, so let's get started. So my colleagues and I are really happy to meet you all today and to introduce you to the wonderful world of Instagram. So Instagram is a visual based social media platform. It's been around since 2010 and it's a lot of fun. It's really dynamic, has a lot of great features that allow for really exciting opportunities to engage with everyone online. And I think it really sets itself apart from other social media platforms in many ways. So we hope to show you that today. So we're going to stick to the basics and really help you get familiar with Instagram so you know how to find your family and friends and what they're sharing. So this is meant to be really fun and hands-on. So if you don't already have your phone out, please take it out. Or not, you can just sit back, relax, and watch. This will be shared with you afterwards so you can follow along at your own time. So let's start from the beginning with your profile and how to manage that. So again, if you don't already have your phone, please take it out and open the Instagram app. So hopefully you have it and you have an account and based on how you set up your account, this may look a little different to you, but just know that whenever you open Instagram, this is the page that you will see. So this is the home page, And so let's just take a look and break down what you're looking at. So at the very top, you'll see the Instagram logo. I have a blank kind of profile photo here or otherwise known as an avatar because I don't have anything set up yet. I see this welcome message from Instagram. And then I see some suggestions here on accounts to follow because I'm brand new, I'm not following anybody. So I wanna bring your attention to this bottom bar here. And I can see I'm on the home page because this home icon is highlighted. And compared to the other icons, it just looks bold. It looks a little more filled out. So that bottom bar is our navigation bar. That's our menu and how we get around Instagram. So again, depending on how you set up your account, you may have different icons there. But for today, I wanna focus on these three icons that you see here. So the home icon, the magnifying glass icon, which is for the explore page, and then that profile avatar, which is you, that's your profile. So first thing I wanna do together is make our way to our profile page. So using that bottom bar, you're gonna tap on that profile icon and you should be on your profile page. So if you notice on the bar now around that profile photo, now there's a black ring letting you know that you're on the profile page. And if you look at the home icon, it's now outlined and no longer black. So looking at our profile, let's, let's break down what we're looking at again. So at the very top, I see my username, which right now is CMC test 2 I see that blank profile photo. I see some numbers here that correspond with posts, followers, following. And I see an edit profile button. And then I see a couple more icons and some instructional prompts that are asking me to add my name and a bio. For now, I want us to focus on this top section here, which is our profile information. So mine looks pretty blank right now, right? You can't tell that it's me. There's no photo of me. My name is not there. You might, um, yours might appear differently or it might appear the same. So what I wanna do is personalize it. I do wanna add a little bit more about myself and a photo. So if you'd like to update your profile, you can go ahead and follow along. What I wanna do is tap on that edit profile button. So go ahead and click on that. 
And then it should pull up this little form here to edit and add some information. So I can see that there's my blank photo and it has a link here to change profile photo. I see there's a field to add my name. There's a field for my username, which can be updated. You can change it. There's a field for a website. If I have one that I manage, or let's say I have one that I want to share with people that I know, I can add it there. And then there's a field for bio information. Okay, so this is completely optional. You can leave it the way it is. You don't have to add your name, <clears throat> but just know that <clears throat> first of all, this information is public. Even if your account is set to private, just know that that top information is what others will see. So if you don't add your name, it will affect others' ability to find you or to identify you if you found them or if you comment on their photo, they might not know it's you. So, <clears throat> and then if you tap on change your profile photo, it will bring up your phone's camera roll. So any photos that you've been taking with your phone are easily accessible at the click of a button. Valerie, now, we have a quick question from the chat. Um, so what's the difference between your name and username and which one will actually appear when you post a photo? Right, good question. So your name could be obviously your name. The username is a little different. So each username has to be unique, much like an email address, for example. So <clears throat> when you post and when you're on the feed, just like Facebook, you will see the username. That's also known as a handle. So if you hear someone use the word handle, that is <clears throat> referring to your username. So again, someone has to visit your profile to see your name if you choose to share that on your profile. So it makes you be a little bit more anonymous when you're posting your photos. Right, exactly. So, and just quick um, update or quick info about the photo. It doesn't have to be a photo of yourself. You can choose your pet, you can choose a flower, you can choose a sunset, anything you'd like. So I wanted to make some changes. I added a cute photo of a dog. I added my name because I do want to be found. I wanted to update my username, make it a little more personalized. And then I added just a couple of my interests. Um, you can, again, get creative with what you want to share in the bio. Um, some people like to put what they do for a living. Our students like to put CMC in their class year, which is great. Or if they're an athlete, what sport they play. So again, you can do whatever you'd like. So this looks good to me. I'm gonna hit done here at the top right. And now it brings me back to my profile page where I can see all my changes reflected there. So for anybody that followed along, just let us know if you did not see your changes, if you had any trouble, just let us know. But that looks great. So my profile is set up. I'm ready to interact. People will know who I am. And I'm ready to get started and explore a little bit. Can, I, can everyone raise their hand if they've gotten this far? Perfect. Good. Great. So let's move on. Now that we're all set up, how do we get around? How do we find our family and friends? What do we do next? So let's make our way back to that home page using that bottom bar. Go ahead and tap on that. And now I can see I have the update, right? I have my photo here, but it still looks pretty blank. So as I start to follow my family and friends or anything else that I'm interested, this will start populating with the photos and videos that they're all sharing. So it's just like your Facebook feed, you know, you'll start to see things based on your interests. So this is basically your curated experience on Instagram. So just a quick note about what you see here. There are actually two feeds of content. We'll get into each of those feeds shortly. 
So for now, I want us to focus on that next icon, which is the magnifying glass. So if you click on that, you'll be on the explore page. Now don't get thrown off. You'll see a lot of photos and videos there in the, in the full screen. They'll probably be different than mine that you see here. But I want to just let you know that those are more suggested suggestions from Instagram, more recommendations. So again, it looks pretty random because again, I'm brand new. So don't worry about that for now. Later, as we start to interact more and follow different accounts, this will refine to your interest and it will start giving you better suggestions based on what you are interested in. So for now, I wanna bring your attention to that top search bar here. This is where we can actually find family and friends and search for them. So let's get to that fun stuff. I'm gonna kick it over to Anne, who is gonna walk us through an activity of using that search bar. Take it away, Anne. Before Anne moves forward, I do have um, Ken and Kelly with their hands raised. Ken or Kelly, um, do you wanna put some, a question in the chat? Just wanna make sure anything there is answered before we move on. Maybe they changed their mind. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. All right, well, thank you, Evan, and thank you, Valerie. I'm here today to share with you how to search and find accounts to follow. So for our purposes today, for today's lesson, we're gonna use Claremont Mechanic College, but you can use um, a name of a friend who you know is on Instagram or a family member, or maybe your granddaughter's new puppy has an account. You're gonna, we're gonna help you find an account, but we're gonna use Claremont McKenna College as an example. So you're gonna take out your phone again, and in the search bar, you're gonna type in the name. I'm typing in Claremont McKenna College. So when I do that, the first couple letters, it's just like when you're trying to find someone on Facebook, you're gonna see a list of suggestions, the more letters you put in. So you see here that Claremont McKenna College is at the top, but there are other options tomorrow uh, at the bottom. So you just need to kind of be a detective and figure out, you know, with this information, if it is the person you're intending to follow. So in this case, we know it's come out McKenna College. We can see the logo there. It's in the right colors. It's in the right location. So we're going to tap on that. Okay, this is taking us now to CMC's profile page. And this is what your profile page will also look like. It'll have your username handle at the top like we do here, and then a little our description, where we are, who follows us. And then just below that, if you click on follow, then you're following this account. So why don't you click follow? Okay. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go back to the home page and refresh your screen. Everyone good? Okay, so you'll now see CMC's most recent content in your main feed, or if you followed your friend or your family member, that's you'll see like the their latest. Oh, we have a question how to refresh. So you uh, are you on an iPhone or an Android? You just um, take your phone, just, okay. Android. Yeah, so you should just be able to, it should just refresh, but just by um, pushing the screen down, pulling it down. Um, we have another question, Anne. Mm -hmm. um, so is Instagram computer friendly at all if you don't have it on your phone? Can you put it on your desktop? Valerie, do you want to handle that? I actually use it on my my lap, my desktop a lot. But Valerie, do you have any specifics you want to share? Yeah, so Instagram definitely is accessible on your desktop. If you just go to Instagram.com, you'll be able to log into your account. Just know that it is really tailored for the mobile experience. So you might not see all the features that we'll introduce you to today. 
but you will still be able to get around and check on um, your feed and search for family and friends. Okay, so if we have our questions answered, I'm going to throw it over to Malia, my colleague, because she's got a really interesting um, journey on Instagram. She's just very relatable and she's gonna share with you um, how, who she follows and why. Malia? Thanks, Anne. Hi, everyone. Um, I've been using Instagram for about nine years. I started following friends and family when I was first on, and then I found more and different things to follow the more I explored. So now I like to follow restaurants, places I've been to, like museums or activities that I've done, like the snorkel boat I went on in Hawaii. Um, I'm following those kind of pages is really fun because then it's like a mini vacation again, which is great. So I also follow things like Disneyland, food bloggers, authors, and celebrities. I follow the college that my daughter attends so I can keep up with what's happening on her campus. Um, I was a ballet dancer my whole life growing up, so I really enjoy following professional ballerinas and ballet companies like New York City Ballet and American Ballet Theater. So that's probably the most fun for me. Um, so really anything you're interested in has an Instagram page and that's what can make it so personal and fun when you follow all the different accounts. Leah, we have a question. Um, if you end up following um, like Disneyland or uh, stores, are you inundated with ads? Advertising? Um, yeah, they show up. I tend to just keep scrolling and don't even notice. You can click and unfollow them or hide them, I believe, but Mostly I don't even pay attention and I just scroll and by and keep looking for it. I'm looking for. And then Anne, can you show us um, on the screen? Because we have a question about where can I find the list of everyone I'm currently following on Instagram? Similar to Facebook, you can access it pretty quickly. Can you show that on? Thanks, Gillian. This is Valerie. I actually just answered that in the chat. So if you go to your profile page, um, if you tap any of those numbers, you'll be able to see the list of who you're following or who your followers are. So pretty easy. And thank you, Malia, for sharing. I had a pretty similar experience. I started out following family and friends, but I'm really interested in um, graphic design and photography. So I follow a lot of different artists. And I find that going to the explore page is really cool because it introduces me to a new artist, or it gives me inspiration for my own. So um, again, it's really, you can really tailor your experience there. Valerie, we have a couple more questions from the chat. Um, one person wants to know how they can create a separate Instagram account for business and how to keep the personal and business profile separate. Yeah, so you would really sign up the same way that you did with your personal account. So if you go and um, to your profile and log out, you will have the option to log into an existing account or create a new account. And to toggle between the two, it's really simple. You would just tap on that profile icon. And then when you're on your profile page, um, at the top here, you'll see your username and you can just tap on the username and it'll, it'll have your list of accounts. So I'm actually logged into multiple accounts. I have the college, I have my personal, I have a lot of different ones. So they make it really easy to toggle back and forth. One more question. Um, one user wants to keep her Instagram um, account separate from Facebook because she uses them for different things. She wants us to explain the interface with your Facebook activity. And in her case, I think she doesn't want to have that interface. Yeah, that's a really good question. So when you first set up your account, if you logged in through Facebook, it makes the login process really simple. And it just allows you to use your Facebook information to create and open your Instagram account. The actual content will not be meshed. Um, but the one um, connection that you can do is that when you post to Instagram, you'll have the ability to also post to your Facebook at the same time. But as far if as she, if she wants to keep them separate, not have that interface, 
yeah, you definitely don't need to do that. That's an option and a step that you can do if you want to do that. But if you just launch it, um, you know, through Instagram, it's automatically separate. You don't need to be worried about that. And just a side note before we get to the next question, I have a lot more followers on Facebook than Instagram, just because I haven't had my Instagram for as long. And I find it really handy because I do enjoy posting on Instagram more than Facebook because it's so easy. And it does have a toggle where I can just automatic it automatically posts on Facebook. And I actually get a lot more reaction from my friends on Facebook than Instagram. <laughs> so if you are interested in having the two interface, they it is pretty handy. Um, other question before we move on. Um, when I tap the CMC 75 icon, it takes me to Throwback Thursday, not the pages shown here. Yeah, that's a that's a good. You're actually one step ahead of us. <laughs> so you jumped into a different portion of the profile. Um, you should have seen that temporarily, and um, once it knocked you out of that view of the Throwback Thursday, you should um, be on the profile page. But if you're not, instead of tapping on the photo, you can tap on the handle, the text that says Paramount McKenna. The username. The username, correct. Great questions. Okay. So now that we've found someone to follow, Let's go back to our homepage and actually break down what we're looking at. So I'm going to kick it back to Anne to talk a little bit about our post feed and posts. Thanks so much, Valerie. Hello again. So I'm going to just going to recap. So you're now hopefully following some folks on Instagram. So now we're going to break down the elements of a post and show you how to create your own. So um, as Dan pointed out, I, as we were just talking about, in, in each post, you're going to see the name of the account at the top and then as well on the bottom. So it's also known as the account handle or the person's username. So in just and so you can click on these and it'll take you to the profile page of this account. In, our, in this case, it's CMC. And that's where you'd see all of the posts that have been already shared, um, some other special content there, and as well as just more details about the account. So because Instagram is a visually oriented program, it's think of it like you're writing a postcard or have you know sharing a slideshow back in the day my parents used to have slideshow parties and they'd have their friends over and they'd look at pictures from their vacation but um in this case we can do it all on our phones so this is an example um that we're going to talk through today of um we shared of a photo of Sydney Poitier speaking at 2002 commencement ceremony so we had a selection of possible visuals to use here. And so, but um, so you see, we could have just used one, but because we had more in our archive that we wanted to share, we actually used more than one. And the way you can tell that we've used more than one is there are three dots at the, in this case, three, because we used three photos. But if it were four photos, it'd be four dots, et cetera. So, um, to, so you don't wanna miss out on these photos. So you're just gonna tap the photo and then swipe it left, just how it's doing in the animation on the right. And as you see here, each dot, as each dot highlights, it's the picture. So the second picture and now the third picture, a Sydney Portier, Portier with Dean Gann. So you can also post a short video here. Um, I think the video length is up to 60 seconds. The next part we're gonna talk about, is everyone good by the way, we, we all good? Okay, so this is a, where we share a caption. So because again, Instagram is a visual platform, you don't have to use a caption. You know, brevity is the soul of wit. Um, a picture says a thousand words, uh, but in this case, we did have, uh, a, we wanted to share a significant moment in our history. And we thought that um, Mr. Portier's uh, speech was so inspiring. We wanted to share a quote from it in this post. 
So the way you can tell is if it's longer than two lines in the caption, it'll say more. And if you wanna read more, you just tap it. And in the right, it'll show the, shows the caption. And then you just scroll down to read with your finger. So, and then the other part of the, of the caption you're gonna see here are these comments. So we were really excited to see that people shared their comments, um, their own memories of that day. So you can just tap the comments to look at them. And you can also add your own comment, which is what we live for in public affairs and communications office is we love to see the comments that you, that you leave as alumni or parents or um, students also leave comments. Um, so those are really fun for us to see. So the way you add a comment is you just tap into that little blank box at the bottom and just type your comment. You don't even need to use words. As you can see, someone just used emojis in their comment. You don't even need to use the English language. So, um, so, the, uh, so there's that. And then really extra cool feature is you can reply to a comment. So you can actually have a conversation on Instagram between, you know, if you see your old roommate posted something or someone you haven't heard from in a while, you can, you can reply to them. The other part here that's um, similar to Facebook, but is a little bit different is that you can, you can share, you can like something. Now in Facebook, you have more than one option. You can like something or you can show that something makes you sad or angry, but here it's just a positive fist bump. It's just a heart, which we love to get the, the hearts. We love it when someone taps the heart. You can also heart someone's reply to their if someone's comment. Does anyone have any questions about that? I wanted to yeah, I inter interject quickly if I could. Um, when it comes to editorial content and what the team puts together through Instagram, this Sydney Portier example is just, just one kind of thing that we try to do. It's kind of got that throwback model where we're pulling an old photo and some context from the past, um, but not everything has to be from the past. You'll find when you're following your friends and family, uh, they might post a photo of childhood or an anniversary celebration. So there's a nostalgia element to Instagram that you can play around with. We also try to engage with new content. And it's not always um, captions that are this long, for example. You're going to find a variety as you're going through various feeds and posts. Uh, sometimes we just like to take advantage of kind of the visual power of what we can see on our own campus. So our photographer might come back with some great photos of students on skateboards and we just want to show the California sunshine on a college campus like ours and we'll just very simply put that and you'll you'll be surprised I think sometimes to see the engagement in comments where you know people are just kind of celebrating that moment so we like to we like to live in that space as well one thing I just wanted to add is um, recently my daughter posted a photo that I happened to be in, but I wasn't checking Instagram. And a friend of mine in the comments just put my handle. So then that gave me like a notification that I had been, that I was in this photo. So you can do that as well. And a lot of our students do that when we post student photos because they're not necessarily looking at every single post we're placing. So like a friend might put, you know, at Gillian, so then they would know that they're in this photo. So Gillian, when we're doing that, um, that's a really, that's a really good point. You just got to make sure that you put the at sign in front. So they get a notification. Um, of that they're that they're in the post or if they, you just want someone to see your post you could also do that in the photo wow that's, that's also known as tagging so you'll often hear people say did you tag me i didn't see the photo tagging is when you use the app symbol and the handle yeah so we had a question from dan about please explain the use of the at sign he doesn't fully understand yeah, so again, it's it's called tagging. So when you use the at symbol and then with no spaces, add that handle, whoever's username that you're trying to tag. Um, and then when you click enter and that comment posts, it kind of looks like a hyperlink. It's, it'll, it'll appear blue. 
and it's tappable. You can tap on it to visit that person's profile, but that person will get a notification saying somebody mentioned you in a comment or somebody tagged you. Like, for example, we had the picture of President Gann with um, Sydney Poitier. Maybe one of her friends saw it and put at whatever her username is. Let's just say it was Pamela Gann. That's her username. They put right in, rather than making a comment and saying, great photo, they might put just at Pamela Gann. And then she gets a, a notification saying, someone mentioned you. So it's just kind of like a little, a little way so you can go back and be like, oh my God, I'm in that photo. Does that explain, explain it to you, Dan? And I see Dan entered another um, question about, um, I'm sorry, Kelly, about a hashtag versus at. So this is getting a, a little bit advanced, but hashtags are kind of words or phrases that you can use that hashtag symbol plus a word or phrase. And this is kind of like a search on Instagram. So if I do hashtag flower, this is how I can see a list of everyone who used the hashtag and I'll probably see a lot of flowers. So in this case, we could tag a hashtag Sydney Poitier. And if you visit that link, again, it um, acts as a hyperlink. Um, you can see a lot of different photos of Sydney Poitier. So again, that's you can use the explore page for that. Um, in that top search bar, you can search Sydney Poitier and look at the tags associated. I'm pretty certain that hashtags became popular mostly through Twitter. They've obviously evolved into multiple social media spaces, but uh, the way that I interpret hashtags, at least, even when I'm kind of using them casually with friends, you know, in text messages as a joke, it's, it's meant to just kind of create your own trending topic, um, you know, just something that has a little bit of extra oomph or maybe even a funny inside joke but on a social media scale usually that identifies something that a lot of people have capitalized on in the moment and are hashtagging simultaneously to create a trend which to valerie's point then will allow you to search it with a lot more ease and frequency and as Evan pointed out, we used hashtags and we're still using hashtag CMC75 with our special anniversary posts. And that was a great way to filter those because um, other folks were using them in their, on their posts as well that weren't just the ones we created. So we could see all of the different um, CMC75 posts that way. Yeah, so in that instance, to Anne's point and to what Evan wrote about hashtag CMC75, we're sending a signal to people that we would like them to use that with anything related to the 75th anniversary. And the more that we post on 75th anniversary related topics, they would begin to see the pattern that, oh, hashtag CMC75 is kind of part of whatever we're doing uh, in, in that realm of posting. I just want to interject um, really quickly that we're getting so many good questions that we might run a little bit after one and we're, we're going to stay on as long as you all want to stay on so just don't worry about the time. Um, Valerie there's an there's a question from Dan about the homepage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so your homepage is now showing the posts from the only person you're following. How do you stop this so as you. Again, since it's the only person you're following, that's what you'll see. As you start to follow more people, you'll see different things there. But as long as you're following somebody, your home feed will be populated with content. So that's um, your news feed. That's yeah. where you're going to find all your friends. Mm -hmm. So you can. Um, there's a way to mute someone if you don't want to see their content anymore, but then you'll have to remember to undo that. Um, so just know that your home feed will always have something there. Yeah, great questions. He's following CMC, but he's not seeing posts. 
oh, the CMC 75 hashtag. Is that right? Um, so I'm going to type it in the chat, but as Evan typed, you have to search for that in the explore page, no spaces, hashtag CMC 75. Um, or actually, I'm sorry, don't use the hashtag it if you're using that search bar in the explore page. But there'll be different tabs asking um, if you're looking for a person or a tag. So you can hit tag. Or you can visit any of our posts that have that. Um, if you stay on after Dan, we'll kind of go through it with you a little yeah. bit more one on one. Right, so here you see our our home feed. This is CMC's feed. These are the good news stories that we share. It's a sample of them. So, you know, recent faculty publications. Um, we're really proud to, to share that Mike Sutton um, is named to one of the hundred greatest coaches list. We we're just a super proud stag moment for us. Um, when students get named to be um, like we had a Rhodes Scholar recently, like we're incredibly proud of her and then these and then two Schwartzman scholars so we our news feed tends to be good news yeah and just a quick note that when you're on your home feed and you've been scrolling down for a while you can always tap on that home icon to take you all the way back to the top again it's kind of like a reset So you read a post, people. It's time in the class where you really do need to take out your phone because we're going to be posting. So when you're ready, here we go. So on the home page, so I actually have an Android. So I'll be giving the directions in for iPhone and Android. Okay, so you're going to open up Instagram. You see Instagram logo on the left. And on the right, you see three little, little, and one of them is a plus sign. You're gonna tap on that. And that's gonna reveal a menu of four different choices, post, story, real, or live. So today we're just gonna keep it simple. We're just gonna post, just gonna click on that, tap it. Okay, here's the best part. You're gonna choose a photo from your phone's camera roll if you have an iPhone or in my case, because I have an Android, I am going to see a, right, a blue arrow in the top right-hand corner instead of the blue words. I see a blue arrow. So you can go through here. These are all the photos you've taken recently that are in your, in my case, a gallery on iPhone, it's a camera roll. And it's kind of amazing. It's like, you're like, oh, wow, I didn't realize I took a picture of that. Okay. Um, so, so you're going to tap it. When you choose your photo, you tap it. And it appears in that iconic square Instagram shape. And you're going to tap next if you're on iPhone or arrow if you're on the Android in the top right-hand corner. Okay, here's where it kind of gets a little fancy, but we're gonna skip this part for now. This is where you could add a filter or you know, use an edit option, like if you wanted to crop your picture or that kind of thing. But we're just gonna keep it simple. A lot of people do, a lot of people are proud to leave, proudly don't use filters, so we don't need to. We can just tap next in the top right-hand corner or the right-hand arrow sign. So just give it a tap. Okay, so there's your picture. It's looking smaller and there's room to write a caption. But as we've talked about, it's a visual medium. You don't need to write a caption. You could keep it to two words. You can just maybe have a little inspirational quote. You don't have to do anything. And this is also where we mentioned earlier where you would tag people if you wanted to find a friend to tag in this picture. Okay, once you've decided that, you just tap either of the word share or in my case, because I'm using Android, a blue check mark. Okay, and it takes a few seconds to process. And there it is, Should it's your post is now live. Everyone get that okay? Raise your hand if you are able to post.
Let us know in the chat if we need to go over a little bit more on this. Um, oh, we are getting to stories. That is our next section. So that, that will be coming. But for now, just posting a photo that will be on your non-sport story feed. Hopefully everyone is able to do that. And if you make your way back to your profile, you'll see that you now see it there. So when someone visits your profile, they can now see that first photo that you've shared. That will be in their news feed. Mm -hmm. I see a raised hand from Paul Novak. It's down now. Okay. Valerie Nan, I just, just wanted to make a clarification here uh, in case someone did post something and they want to get rid of it, you are allowed to delete posts, correct? Definitely. So if you look at the top right of your post in the home feed, there are three little dots there and it gives you some options. If you tap it, you can edit it. You can edit the caption. If you made a mistake, you can delete it. Um, so pretty handy. And if you're using an Android, the dots are going in a different direction than if you're using an iPhone. They're vertical instead of horizontal. Or excuse me, yeah. Real quick question. Um, if I want to search the contacts on my phone to see who's on Instagram, how do, how do I do that? Maybe we can stay after. Okay. Question. I actually am going to stay after too because I want to know that answer. <laughs> Well, if we don't have any other questions, I'm going to throw it to my colleague, Thomas, who's going to take you through stories. Take it away, Thomas. Hey, everybody, it's story time. I, sorry, I just wanted to say that. Um, so, so Valerie earlier had showed you in a slide that there are two feeds in Instagram. And this is not something that I think would be too uh, intuitive if you just opened up your homepage. You'd be like, what are you talking about? There's a traditional post feed that we just went through that goes in your news. And that very much is similar to Facebook, which some of you, again, might have more familiarity with. Stories is a little next level, even for someone like me who you know, has used a lot of technology and social media platforms, but isn't an active, avid user. So in full disclosure, when I first heard stories used as an Instagram term, I, I instantly went to the, the common knowledge of what a story is. And as a writer by trade, I figured this is just going to be text. This is going to be what you would fill your caption with. This would be a post. And I quickly learned that it's its own unique component in Instagram and really is, I think, the reason, at least from what I have heard, why a lot of engagement happens on Instagram, particularly with young people. They really love this way to absorb and engage with content. So your stories feed is where the arrow is pointing. And, and Dan already kind of hit it earlier when he clicked on that 75 those circles are actual stories. They're, they're different content, they're original content from the posts that we just referred to. So that top line, and Valerie, I think would confirm this, is really where Instagram wants you to go first and foremost. It's at the top for that reason. And there's another good reason why you should engage with stories right away. It's because it has a temporary quality. Uh, it only exists for 24 hours. So, you know, get it while it's hot, basically, uh, in Instagram social media terms. Um, so you're probably scratching your head a little bit like I was. Why would something only be available for 24 hours? And the reason for that is probably, you know, there's probably a variety of reasons, first of all, but it's really meant to be more of an in the moment snapshot. It's almost like a highlight reel of sort. It's not meant to have a tremendous amount of text or even depth. It's, it's supposed to be something that feels spontaneous. So the way that I think about it, and I know a couple of others on the team who use stories most often, is if you were on vacation, for example, and just wanted to take a quick photo of yourself in front of an amazing sunset or in front of a, a mountain or just some kind of landmark, that might not be something you want to spend a lot of time explaining to someone. You just want to show it to them. So a story would be what you'd want to create to do that. 
of course, you don't have to create a story at all. You can just engage with other people's story content. So we're gonna show you some examples of what that looks like. And again, for 24 hours, uh, temporary, these are things that are kind of fast and furious. They're meant to be short, they're meant to be temporary, and they're meant to be most of all fun. So here are some examples that we're gonna share from uh, CMC and the variety of accounts that we had. So we've told you about Claremont McKenna College as an official account, but there are also a lot of count accounts based on the variety that our campus has. So on the far left, you're gonna see, again, that awesome hashtag CMC75, but this one comes from the Alumni and Parent Engagement account. It's a throwback photo. I believe that's from Storyhouse. And you can engage this way through like a poll um, or a trivia question, which is what this is doing. So again, it's meant to be a very quick click just to get you to have a little fun, see an old photo and make a guess as to when that photo was taken. On the right is really, I think, what is probably most common in stories, which is that quick snapshot, a very quick sort of tagline or few words and phrase that's just meant to be fun. So this is a CMS athletics account from Swim and Dive, and it just shows two students in a pool and it says last practice of the day. So purely meant to be celebratory and just kind of show you a really quick moment in time. Next, we have a bit more of an advanced story. So this is where content creators like ourselves want to give you a little bit more context, but it's spread out over several stories. So this is actually from an Athenaeum guest who came to CMC. And we're giving you a couple different modes of engagement and observation here, not only giving you his bio information, but also in the third panel on the phone, a chance to register for the event. So directly through here, and also in the fourth panel, a really handy reminder to let you know when the event is so that you can you know, attend virtually or in person. One quick note, at the top, you're gonna see some dashes uh, in, and they're gonna highlight as you go across um, the story. So that gives you an indication that there's more to the story than just sort of one frame. And it's gonna move for you uh, through it because it's so quick, but you can also do that with your finger on the far right. And then just to get outside the CMC realm, because so many of you, I assume, are going to have interests beyond our college, although I don't know why you would. Um, on the far left is a news account. So New York Times just kind of showing you how news agencies are trying to get their information out there. So this is an example of, you know, a story that you can engage with through, again, their stories portal. And a lot of news organizations use stories now for breaking news. Uh, they don't want to clog or overload their posts in your news feed with too much information, or they might not have that information yet. So they're going to use that in stories. And then on the far right, you have a different example, which is really something just personal. It's a happy birthday message to someone close in your life. And again, it's just meant to be very short, fun, and more visual than anything. So. Um, as someone who doesn't create stories quite as often, I, I do want to ask Valerie, since she does that from the CMC account, what she finds to be the most fun or engaging part of using stories, because there might be many of you thinking, I don't know what I would use this for, but in order to, I think, maximize Instagram, this is something you at least want to pay attention to. Yeah, so in my CMC role, one way that I really like to use stories is to use these engagement stickers. So there are a lot of different elements that you'll see like this, how the New York Times has a link. Anytime you see a sticker like this and it's in a white box, those are usually tappable. So those are opportunities for you to engage or like this visit the link that they're sharing. But there are some times that it'll be a box with a question and it'll tell you tap on it to answer or respond. So I like using that for example, when it's finals week on campus and you know we're telling our students, hang in there, the semester is almost over. And I like to use it to connect you alumni with our students and ask alumni, can you please share some encouragement for our students? Or do you have any study tips for them? So you can use that sticker to say, hey, I like to go outside for a walk 
you know, we break up the day a little bit or, you know, listen to this playlist or listen to this artist to help me relax and focus. So that's how I like to use it um, on campus. And it, it's, it's really fun to see how, um, you know, what alumni share, what the community shares with our students. And, um, and so I'm able to share those responses afterward in stories so that students can actually see them and use those tips. And Valerie, if I could add just kind of like what many of you will probably in your story feed probably going to be similar to mine, like my daughter will post stories much more than posts. She posts about once every six months because it has to be curated and person and, you know, perfect. But in stories, she'll post like a night out with her friends, you know, like a video of a fun video or, you know, a day at the beach, or it's almost kind of like selfies, like a quick, not necessarily great shot, but like a little snapshot. So it's really fun. And also it's a way for me to kind of keep tabs on everything that's happening with her and her friends and my younger relatives. So it is really great if you can engage that way with um, with some of your friends and family. I know there was a, a question asking about why the person who's creating the stories can still see stories if they're temporary. I think Valerie you answered that, but that is because you created it, right? So your archive of stories will still be there, but other people will not see that. And I just wanted to reaffirm that I think the temporary quality, at least probably from Instagram's vantage point, is if something goes away, it kind of becomes more special and it wants to kind of allow you to engage with stories in a way where you are checking it every single day. And in fact, we had a coworker just kind of as a, a slightly funny story who mentioned that his wife often will say to him, did you see that video or that photo in stories on Instagram? And he'll say, I'll get to it later. And then it's like four days later and he can no longer see it. So it's, it's kind of meant to train you to really pay attention to that spot because there might be so much great personal content there. So Valerie, uh, with that note, then how do we know when you have a new story? Right, so besides that top feed that we showed you where you can access the active stories that are available to you to see, um, and I think it was Dan that did this. So you can also notice when you're in your post feed, let's say you're scrolling down and you notice someone's profile has this pink and orange ring around it, this is a visual alert to tell you that this person has posted a story. Hey, you might want to check it out before it disappears. So not only can you access um, your whole story feed. So if you open any of the stories here at the top, this will open your whole feed. So as you start following more people, you'll see more circles there at the top. So opening from that place will allow you to kind of go through the whole feed. But let's say you were scrolling and you noticed CMC had a ring around the profile. If you open from there, you'll only see CMC stories. So different ways to access it, but basically anywhere you see that ring, go ahead and tap it and you'll be able to see the story. So I know we're running out of time and I think some of you may have already done this. <laughs> But um, we wanted to quickly have you look at CMC stories and do that activity. So, um, can we, Valerie, can we just have a quick question? Yeah. Um, uh, we have um, someone who wants to know if you can put your own posts in something like an album. Um, so you can save them chronologically, or are they saved chronologically? So the way that they appear on your feed, they're in reverse chronological order. So that first box is always gonna be your most recent post or anybody's most recent post whenever you visit someone's profile. Um, the ability to organize posts, I think it's kind of an advanced um, feature that I don't believe it's accessible to everyone, but we can stay on and talk about that. Yeah, because she actually wants to access past ones really easily without having to scroll through everything to get to the ones toward the bottom. But we can we can go over that after the presentation. 
Got it. Yeah. So if you um, if you follow CMC or if you're on our account, um, you can actually look at our epic stories today. So today is Thursday, and usually a trend on social media is Throwback Thursday, sharing an old photo um, from the past, kind of relive that nostalgia. So we wanted to do what is an, actually another trend, how it started versus how it's going. So we're showing um, a photo from Collins when they first opened versus now we have these amazing art installations outside that students can look at while they're eating lunch inside. So, um, and then the second story we have posted is actually a poll. Now this is a lot of fun and you can actually vote here. I have um, a question asking what is or was your favorite afternoon snack? You can vote whenever you see this, please engage with it. Um, not only can you vote, but when you tap on it, you tap your choice, you'll be able to see which option is in the lead. And if you see at the top left here, I actually tagged the Athenaeum because I'm referring to the Athenaeum snack. So that is an active link. Again, you can tap on it and be able to visit the Athenaeum page. So if you haven't already, please let us know um, how, which snack is your favorite by visiting our story and taking a look at that. So just let us know, I think. Um, Has everyone participated in the poll? Because we'll tell you the result, or you'll see the results actually in your story. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of students have been voting already. Strawberries, 72%. Rice Krispie Treats, 28 mm -hmm. Yeah, so again, um, as you start to be more familiar with Instagram and you start following more people, we really encourage you to check out stories often. And if you see any kind of engagement piece like this, just participate in it. It's so much fun. And um, yeah, you'll never know. You never know what you'll see in there. We like to surprise you. <laughs> yeah, so. If you want to see any more CMC content, here are some accounts that you can follow. I included the handle here so you can search for them. But if you followed CMC, you probably get those suggestions um, on other accounts. There's a lot. There's a lot of CMS. There's a lot of different ones you can follow. Well, that's it. Congratulations. You know the basics of Instagram and you're ready to explore on your own. So if you liked this presentation and you want to know more, you want to get advanced, please let us know. We're happy to offer more sessions and kind of dig deeper into all the great features. And we will be sharing these slides with you. Yes. And just have fun, play around. There's so many features that you're going to discover on Instagram. We couldn't possibly cover it in an hour. We probably couldn't cover it in a 102 and a 103. But, you know, just, just again, play around with it. And I think you're going to find a lot to explore. And that will, as you go into it more, make a lot more sense to you as you continue to do it. So we have time for questions. And I, I do want to mention that if anyone needs to depart, it is 103. Uh, the session was scheduled in at one, uh, and a, a thank you to our public affairs team, and also a thank you for them sticking around a little bit longer to answer any questions, but if you do need to depart, feel free to do so. Um, if you'd like to ask a question, you can put it in the chat. You can also raise your hand if you'd like. Um, any other questions or anything, uh, maybe Gillian, anything you wanted to follow up on that we haven't answered yet? Um, I think there was a question about um, the this, this stories. And it, Valerie, can you explain a little bit more about archiving the stories or why stories may um, not disappear? And I believe that we're referring to our own stories. Like we have access to our own stories forever, correct? Just not other people's? Right, yeah. So if you share the story yourself, um, after 24 hours, it will always be accessible to you in your archive. So if you even posted a post, a regular post, you can choose to archive that if you don't want it visible on your profile anymore. So there's an actual archive section 
where you'll be able to see all your posts that you are archived or the stories that you've shared in the past 24 hours. You'll be able to see it there and even reshare it if you'd like. So we can um, walk through that in an advanced session if you'd like. Great, and Dan raises yeah. hand. Dan, you have a question? Yeah, I'm at the CMC page. Is that the right word? Sure. And tap on the icon because I, I think I see, it's difficult to discern, but I think I see a band around it indicating stories. It goes first to Throwback Thursday. Do I control how fast it goes through stories do, or do I have to wait for it to get to the next story? So you can wait for it to advance on its own, but let's say you're ready to move on to the next one or if there's a lot of text that you want to read, you want to take your time reading, all you have to do is just put your finger down on the screen anywhere and it will pause that automation. All right. What about speeding it up? So if you want to go to the next one, you would tap the right side of the screen. Ah, these are these intuitive things that, you know, I I'm sorry. I think intuitive is a lousy way to learn complicated stuff. <laughs> But, and likewise, let's say you have a lot of different stories there. If you want to go back, tap on the left side. Uh-huh. Well, oh, great. Thank you. And if I could, my original question, I'm going back to my homepage in a moment. And my homepage is just showing a, an, a, a looping feed of my grandkid from my daughter. Um, I'm following two sources, mm -hmm. her and CMC, but all I'm getting is this looping of Lucas here. So if you slide the screen up, do you see more? That's all I see is a little bit of commentary at the bottom. And if you keep pushing up, do you oh, see? It doesn't move any farther. Can you show me the screen one more time, please? Yeah, and I'll show you pushing up. Are you, is that an Android? Yes. And do you have any suggestions? I wonder if you're in the post view, like if you're looking at comments. Maybe go to the home and then go back. Okay, I'm at home. You are on home, yeah. As you can see down at the bottom there. Mm -hmm. I press push up and. Is that maybe their only post? No, I mean. He's following oh, not getting CMC's post. What? He's in his newsreel. You're in your newsreel, so you should be getting CMC's posts too. How do I know I'm in my newsreel? So on the bottom, the home icon is highlighted in white. Yeah. yeah. Any tips, Anne? Well, I'm not getting it. Hmm. This is normal for me, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> happens well we can talk maybe uh if you want i could call you sure okay let, let me... others ask their questions okay i wonder if you refresh if you drag it down this time and see what happens same thing i'll now i get or turn it uh, step out of instagram and then go back in again maybe Sure. In fact, I will make sure I close all the apps mm -hmm. and get into it. Might be different. There we are again. Oh, you that scroll works, down. That's scroll more up. Stephanie's stuff. So that looks like a story. But we're still getting Lucas. <laughs> I don't mean to monopolize showing you all pictures of my grandson. <laughs> They're, they're super cute. I don't mind that. Um, oh, yeah, he is. He's cute as can be. I'll tell you. Why don't I um, reach out to you privately? Sure. You and I have Androids. So we can we can figure That's this right. out. Did you want to message me your, your phone number or? Um, um, sure. And just yes, we will do. Okay. It'll be in the chat. I'll chat it to you. Okay, great. And I do, I do want to mention quickly too, anything beyond this session, if somebody has questions, uh, you have our names on the screen, but you can also direct them to Valerie uh, since she primarily deals with social media accounts. So uh, we, we'd be happy to answer any private questions there too. Is anyone else, does anyone else have another question for the group? Now's your chance. 
You plan okay, to do a more advanced class. In the chat. Oh, are we planning a more advanced class? Yes, we are. We are planning a 201 class. And please let us know what you'd like to see in that class, because just like building this one, we want to make sure that you're getting the best information possible. So uh, we'd love your feedback on now that you're playing or engaging more with Instagram, what you would like to see as kind of those next steps or what ultimately might confuse you or you just don't quite understand because that happens quite often to me on social media. Um, Valerie, there's a question. I don't know if we know the answer, but I know Facebook has like a marketplace that's really easy to sell stuff. Does Instagram have something similar? Yeah, they actually do. So they have, um, I think as you start to post and follow people, one of those icons on the bottom will change to like a little shopping bag. <laughs> so that is a whole different feed where you can find different shops. You can also open your own shop and post things to sell. I have not gotten into that space, but it's definitely an option. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, looks like the questions, questions. the questions have expired. We look forward to Instagram 201 in hopefully in a month or two, give or take, we'll be announcing during our Sunday um, uh, CMC Connects newsletter. Uh, thanks to Gillian and Valerie. Uh, Dan's next to my screen. Thanks to Dan for showing us some fantastic <laughs> pictures, uh, Thomas and Malia uh, as well. So uh, with that, uh, a big thanks from Claremont McKenna College. Have a great week and a great weekend. Uh, and do email Valerie if you have follow-up questions. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>